I came into town with a knapsack on my shoulder and a pocket full of stories that I just had to tell. You know I've knocked around a bit and I've had my share of small town glories. It's time to hit the city and that crazy Preservation Thursday, ladies and gentlemen, the great storyteller of all time, Harry Chapin, bringing us in this morning. Sunday morning sunshine. Here into the Monday morning rain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Preservation Thursday. We'll let him sing us out. We'll let him sing us out. Make sure you check the links in the description today, ladies and gentlemen, I, I got a bunch of stuff to go over. Where did I put my notes? Where did I put my notes? Of course, the big news, safeguard gobbling up five brothers. I would lean any property against five brothers right now. Lean them. Just me. Just me. I want my money. I want my money. Once again, we had a breaking news story yesterday about uh, uh, John Navarro down from the Merkin Group. Feels what has been done is not just against the law. It's morally and ethically wrong. Ethically wrong, Mr. Miller. Judgments, give him a call. Give him a call. You never know. Uh, uh, everybody says, here's what I think. I'm going to ask a question that's come in. If they change the company name, are they still liable? I say, yes, they are. Some people are saying because they've changed the company name, you can't go get the person behind the company name. That was bullshit. Yes, it is. Because you can put their name on it. You put their name on it. It doesn't matter what they change the business name. The duck still quacks at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you have to do it. Again, I just got a message in from Idaho this morning about, is it true? The scuttlebutt is. Safeguard has gobbled up. Five brothers. So what are they going to call them? The safe siblings? I don't know. I do not know. I do not know. Mary, thank you. Mary down in Miami, Florida. Mary from Miami, Florida. Is it suntan time down there? I don't know. I don't know. It's cold here. As you can see, it is chilly willy this morning. We got a little snow last night, folks. Getting a little rugged looking here, I can see. Uh, uh, you have to, excuse me, uh, in transition, in transition. Uh, uh, like I said, we're getting ready to get up the road here, and we're just about ready. We're just, uh, it's going to be quick here now. Uh, but... Give Fannie Mae a call, the Resource Center. Call the Resource Center, hit four, and then four again in the funny queue. Fannie Mae fraud. Do you got, did you not get paid? Did you not get paid for doing Fannie Mae work? Did NFN, did Sherry not, driving around the country in her Jaguar, did she not steal your money that you earned on the Fannie Mae property? Fannie Mae fraud. Call Fannie Mae fraud. Another avenue to pursue. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, let me, let's just back up for a minute and think about this. You got the Fannie Mae fraud. You got Wells Fargo fraud. You got RMS. Do they have a fraud department? Does HUD? HUD have a fraud department. Yes, they do. Mr. Williams is working on that right now. He's, he's working with the fraud people. This these agencies that we continue to reference time after time after time after time, they can't do anything if they don't have the information. You want it to stop? Give them the information. You want the back charges to stop? 1099 the back charge so the IRS gets it. Do da, do da, ba da da da, ba ba. Come on, man. 
let these people work for you. You've already worked and spent your money, and now it's got stolen. Your taxes that you're supposed to be paying, but you can't pay because your money got stolen. Pay these agencies to investigate fraud. Let's get the investigation up. Giddy up. Giddy up. I mean, come on now. But thank you, Mary, down in Miami of Florida for, for that information. Mary got stung. She called. There's a, So we got another state now. I got Florida now. Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah. I got the, the North and South Dakota going on. Texas, Louisiana. And I, 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 what the gal, what the heck was the gal's name? From Mississippi. The gal from Mississippi. Real nice lady, too, man. Uh, 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 oh, man. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, uh, uh. But a good gal, Kate, I think it might have been, or, or, or Kathy. I'm not sure. I don't remember now. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. But really nice gal from Mississippi. Do not ask me, ladies and gentlemen, how when you go out there to look up Sherry Not NFN, you get my phone number. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It could be something in the winds. Something in the winds. Maybe there's some star-crossed thing going on with me and Sherry Not. I don't know. Sherry, are you tricking people? Are you tricking people? Do you want me to find you, Sherry? Because that's what we're about getting ready to do, folks. Everybody needs to start. Somebody told me the other day, they're sending me information that she has automobiles, boats. She's got, hey, whatever information you have, get it to us so we can get it in a repository so when the lawyers and the everybody comes knocking, law enforcement comes knocking, we can say, oh yeah, here, here you go. Think about it. Think about it. National field representatives, in order to create a better industry standard, ladies and gentlemen, it's 2018, get ready for that term, industry standard, the National Mortgage Service Association, who happens to be meeting coming up here next month, if I'm not mistaken, uh, are the mortgage servicers, their, uh, uh, their outfit, they've already said they need industry standard. They've already done it. You watch that term, national field representatives, violating though in a different twist my humble opinion my humble opinion the national mortgage servicing association nmsa they want industry standards so they can stuff education down your throat why do i say this i hate it when somebody does it on tv and i just catch myself doing it is that crazy or what Anyways, the reason I really believe, it's just an opinion. It's just an opinion, but it's my gut instinct telling me this. Industry standard. You guys, anybody following me, the, the 5,000 some people out there following me, if you've been probably that first half, the two, first 2,000, you know I have been saying that I have been saying since two. 2010, there needs to be an industry standard. There needs to be something the same across the board. In my humble opinion, it was to start with a quality control policy for the industry. You go inspect the property, you give them all the information right there, boom, bada, bing, bada, bam. It is done. Everything. If you're not qualified to do it, then you need to get out of the industry and get another job. It's that simple. And they also need to bring the work home. Ms. Dr. Ben Carson, you need to utilize the office in Reno, Nevada and find Nevada contractors. It's not that difficult. You already got our taxes are paying somebody to be in that office anyway. This is what I don't understand and why labor can't push back a little bit with the right arguments. And the right arguments need to come from who? Of course, an attorney. Well, it, it, it's real easy when you have RICO violations going on to get an attorney involved. But you got to be willing to go to bat, folks. There's the key. You got to go to bat. John Navarro, the Merkin Group, 727-601-0277. We'll get his information and the website in the description, ladies and gentlemen. We will also uh, 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 have... 
Oh, man, I, I, I can't remember. There's a lot of... Oh, the Copeland Act. The Copeland Act. That's right. That's why we're talking about national field representatives. In order, in order, call me crazy. Call me freaking crazy. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. In order to create a better standard, we're going to institute a policy that violates the Copeland Act. U.S. Code 40, Section 40, Subsection 276, in the description, links in the description. Again, look at this stuff. Feed this to your lawyers. If there's, a law if there's lawyers out there willing to get everybody on board, I mean, this, I, I, I got to be honest, folks. We should not be in this position today had People acted like business and took care of business. It has been allowed to progress. And in the quest of pecuniary greed, the, the, the one, that, that, it, there's just something about that element of the nature of the beast, pecuniary greed, that people will just kind of Push their integrity across the table. Kind of like uh, uh, Crossroads. Remember the story about Crossroads where, okay, I'm going to make you the greatest blues man ever. I get your soul. Now it's time to come do. That's kind of what it sounds like to me here. That they're going to break a law to do an industry standard and make it better. How do you break a law to make something better? I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but how do you violate? Like 1934, this went into place. 1934, we're going to dig it up. We're going to dig it up. I, I, I got to read you a section of it. I got to read you. Because it, it, it's kind of going to blow your mind because it specifically covers labor. In 1934. Labor issues have been going on a long time, ladies and gentlemen. Why nobody wants to do anything about them? I do not know. I do not know. I, I cannot answer that question. Uh, uh, I, I just don't know why nobody will stand up and be counted sometimes. <clears throat> um, coming out of Maryland in the news this week. Uh, 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 going to a property and foreclosing on it? Part of the debt collection process. That means you cleaning the property for the bank. You're part of the debt collection process. Ow! Ow! That's what it means. You need to go look that article up. There's a link in the description. Legal update. Putting the brakes on foreclosures. Um, the Copeland Act, ladies and gentlemen. The Copeland Act. Title 40, United States Codes. Section 31. 45, Regulations Governing Contractors and Subcontractors. Mm. Let me see here. Whoever, whoever, by force, intimidation, or threat of producing, blah, 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 or threat of procuring dismissal from employment, or by any other manner whatsoever, induces a person employed in the construction, prosecution, completion, or repair of any public building, public work, or building or work financed in whole or part by loans or grants from the United States of America to give up any part of the compensation to which he is entitled under this contract of employment shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for not more than five years or both. It's the law. I didn't write it. It's the law. Been there since 1934. Now, a couple things. Also in the link, you're going to find 
a tie-in to Safeguard Properties and NFN. Okay? I want you to think about this for a minute. The industry is employee. The courts have already ruled that. And it's just a matter of somebody pushing the next domino in line here because somewhere there's got a gap in it. But another state needs to pick this up and get busy. Uh, I'm speaking directly to the attorney generals of every state in the United States of America because you are allowing RICO violations to occur in your jurisdiction every single day. That's what I'm saying. Send this to your state attorney general, folks. I'm calling them out right now. I don't care who they are. You, by allowing NAMFS organizations to continue to order mill work into your state, you are allowing RICO violations to go on every day. Who wants to be the first attorney general that gets to be the hero and, and go be Jeff Sessions' butt buddy? That, that's what this comes down to. Whoever is the first attorney general to say, okay, wait a minute, boom, you guys are all stopping this. They're going to get some national notoriety because you're going to upset all the mortgage folks. Hello. <laughs> uh. <laughs> in the link in the description, there will be. Hang on just a minute here. Hang on just a minute here. I got to find it. I got to find it. I got to find it. Um, there will be something for foreclosurepedia.org. A link to the Copeland deal. Oh, I haven't found that yet. Okay. Um, there's a connection with Sherry Knott and Safeguard Properties. The connection is an address registered to NFN and Jaffa and a retirement home. I keep getting all these questions. This is a question of the week. Business 101. When you start chasing money and you start chasing things and you find something that you do not understand, you don't ignore it. You pass that information on to somebody that does understand it. In this case, you want to attach everything, everybody, every person known to your lawsuit. You are now because... This address of the retirement old folks home, NFN, Jeffrey Jaffa, Jeffrey Jaffa, brother-in-law, or brother or somebody, with Mr. Klein over at Safeguard Properties. Bingo. Hello. The address of the old folks home is NFN. Okay, how is that happening? How can that be? NFN's offices are empty. Where's the old folks home? I don't know. But these are questions that will get sorted out by the court, not by you. You don't have to even understand why you're putting this retirement home and Jeffrey Jaffa on your complaint. You have no idea. It doesn't matter if you know or not. You put it on on there because it ties into NFN and there's money in the Joppa pocket. Their coffers are full because they're stealing from labor too. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, was it Secure View or, or Invisiboard or uh, another scam and a sham on labor in the industry? Time for me to get out of here today. This is going to be a short episode. A short episode. We had the, the thing yesterday once again. John Navarro with the Merkin Group. NFN Issues. Call him. <coughs> Excuse me. 727-601-0277. Up to the minute. Fraud reporting, ladies and gentlemen. Foreclosurepedia.org. Foreclosurepedia.org. Uh, uh, and they're reporting right now. They're reporting... Safeguard gobbling up five brothers, so there's got to be merit there. There's some merit there. Uh, uh, and in other news over here, uh, uh, Mr. Williams is. I, I, I have been forwarding, getting everything over to him. RMS, Fannie Mae, 
HUD, if you did work for them, if you're out here on the West Coast or something and you need a conduit to go, I mean, electronic means is crazy, but COO at the foreclosurepedia.org, foreclosurepedia.org, uh, uh, he will get you, he'll get your stuff in the, in, in the mix there. And just because you're doing one thing does not mean you do, just do one thing, do numerous. Look, some, somebody asked me yesterday, a question and my response was if it's my money I will do whatever I need to do to get my money it's gonna cost a little bit now you can recoup them I, I, I know that sounds terrible but that's kinda of tip my hat to mister Navarro there contingency contingency let me tell you something. When an attorney says they're going to take something on a contingency or, or anybody, when they see something like this that is major and it's going to be time consuming, it's going to be a lot of upfront money, they don't normally say, we'll take it on if they're going to lose money. So think about that uh, uh get a hold of these guys and like i said uh, uh one of the questions uh, uh if you have a judgment and these guys are floating around changing the company names and you can't keep tapping them he can give them a call he might be able to help you he might be able to help you you never know you never know 727-601-0277 john navarro down in miami beach florida home of jackie cleason remember jackie cleason folks honeymooners Miami Beach audience, the greatest audience in the world. He was a talent. He was a funny guy, man. He was a funny guy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up. Uh, uh, subscribe to the station. Pick a new, couple new subscribers up. If you're looking for advertising, give me a holler. Uh, I could always use the extra buck here and there. Uh, uh, if you can donate, uh, we, we do uh, rely on donations, and it's getting thin right now. I'm telling you, it's getting, it, it, it's... Always in transition is like that. Uh, uh, there's never enough time to go out and, and make some change or whatever. So, and I hate to sound like I'm begging, but eh, you know, sometimes you have to. Um, yeah, tip of the hat. Let's have a great day. Let's all be safe out there, huh? Oh, wait a minute. You know what? We're going to let. Let's let Harry sing us out. Is he still here? I don't know. Maybe he's not here. Maybe he's not here. He's gone. He's gone, but we can find him. This is a great song. This really was a great song. I actually know how to play this and another one by Harry. All I got is time. It keeps on coming Ladies and gentlemen, again. don't forget, don't forget. These streets were never getting up the road. I'm, I, I got a new assistant coming in to help me now. 501c3, 501c3, fraud in 501c3s. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, you do. What is your cause? I'm asking, what is your cause? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start looking at that cause and find out if it is legitimate 501c3 status for that cause. And everybody knows who I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Don't even got to say it. Hey, never felt so far from the law. Yes, she did. Huh? What a great love song this was. I don't know if you ever listened to it. I'll let him play this out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a great day. Let's all be safe out there. I got to go back to work. You brought your Sunday morning sunshine Here into my Monday morning rain You brought me happiness just one time